Hi everyone, my name is Vita. In this video, I'm going to be drawing an album cover design for the song Oceanic Feeling, which is the final song off of Lord's most recent album, Solar Power. I will also be discussing my perspective towards the essence of this song individually and the entire album. I made this drawing for my Photoshop 1 class. It was my final. The point of the assignment was to choose a song that has an impact on you in some sort of way, like it creates an emotional response, you connect with it, something like that, and then create the feelings you get from that visually and then make that the album cover. When the assignment was first introduced to us, I was already 99% sure I was going to do Oceanic Feeling. It was just a song that I was really enjoying and listening to often at the time and I just absolutely fell in love with it. and that song made me have a whole new appreciation for Lord and her music. I thought to myself, there's just something more with this song specifically under the surface. You can't get the full picture of the song without the context of the album. All of it put together obviously makes more sense. The soundscapes and the lyrics and the meanings just really strike a sense of curiosity and unveiling what the fuck is going on and finding anything else you could enjoy out of the music and find more artistic value in it and you know i'm a big art enthusiast so like anytime i can like dive deep into things and try and find the meaning to it it's extremely fascinating for me so i love doing this and hopefully someone else finds interest in this specific topic as well the song on its own is great and it carries interesting qualities, but it's the final song for a reason and having prepared to listen to it by listening to the album in order from start to finish makes Oceanic Feeling so much more impactful and thorough. I'm gonna give a brief overview of each song and what they all kind of represent and mean. I broke it off in four different sections, so let's get into it. Number one, The Path. This is the introduction of the album, so we are learning about what we're walking into or what we're listening into. The path is more or less a projection of a personal life and its past, present, and its future. We're also introduced to this idea of the sun, which is represented as something that we should reach for and look at for guidance on said path. But this begs the question, like, why are we looking at it for guidance? The surrealness of this album is also clear right off the bat through the lyrics and the sound. You start to wonder, like, what is she talking about? And what are these soothing, happy sounds? Like, it's a fucking vibe. Number two, solar power. We realize how crucial of a symbol the sun is to this album. It's representing enlightenment, faith, trust in the universe, positive energy, intuition, and abundance, which are all important things to hold on to when following the path, even when it gets rough, which is really like such a cliche thing to say, but it it's true. This idea also propels the album forward. Number three, California. California exemplifies themes of the past by describing growing out of certain phases, looking back and appreciating, still loving something even though you've outgrown it by seeing the good that it brought you, even if it wasn't that good in the moment. There's a sorrowful tone, but it's filled with hope and grace. Number four, Stone at the Nail Salon. This is one of my favorites off of this album. When it came out as a single, I was immediately like, yes, this album, it, it's gonna kill me. So Stone at the Nail Salon takes place in the present, but it's also reminiscent of the past and disconnected from secure ideas of the future. It describes the sensation of things being up in the air, uncertainty, confusion, feeling maybe afraid and vulnerable, trying to find comfort in not knowing, while still letting yourself feel your emotions instead of burying them. Number five, Fallen Fruit. The way that we're, we look at the past in this song it's more alarming and universally serious. We're observing our ancestors and those who came before us and how the younger generations of now have had to deal with the consequences of the older generation's actions. This can allude to issues such as climate change and how the hell we escape it if those in power are unwilling to fix it or pay attention to it. The songs before this have also been more individual, whereas Fallen Fruit contains a more group mentality. Number six, Secrets from a Girl Who's Seen It All. This song portrays healing your inner child and talking to your younger self, reminding yourself that it's all gonna be okay and even through all this tough shit, you're gonna get through it. I, I have experienced it, so I can tell you firsthand, it's gonna be okay. The song also has a really weird psychedelic ending, which is 
I, I, I mean, I think it's the best way possible to end this song. I love it. It's one of my favorite aspects of the album. Number seven, The Man with the Axe. This is just a love song. It just feels like experiencing adolescent love through a coming of age. It sounds like it's it comes from a different time. I think this is also the most present song on the album. There's more of a focus on the impact that person this song is about has on the present moment. Number eight, dominoes. We're analyzing how things change and what it all means on a smaller scale. It's called dominoes because these periods of time and these phases in our lives are just clicking from one domino into the next. The past is affecting what happens in the future. It That's kind of just the way it works. <laughs> but I think Lord portrayed that very beautifully. The past six songs of this section have been in first person perspective in the present, looking at the past, analyzing, observing, appreciating, and longing. Number nine, Big Star. We're now in the present moment, and I totally imagined this song being about a person when I first listened to it, but while I was researching for this video, I found on Genius that this is in fact about Lord's dog, which I think is the cutest thing. The song remains general enough to be about anyone you love or care about a lot because she never mentions that it's about a dog. She never mentions specific gender or anything like that. It's just describing what it's like to have something or someone in your life that just is your light and is able to light you up. That portable bit of solar power, I guess. If you can't always find it within, at least you have people or animals, whatever, that you love where you can find it. It's just a really sweet song. Sometimes the thing that seemed the most basic in terms of romance um, can be the most beautiful. <laughs> Number 10, Leader of the New Regime. So this is more so set in the future in a sort of dystopian setting where according to Lord from Genius, the environment is unlivable, society has broken down, and we're all escaping to our far-flung natural sanctuaries to start again. World issues affecting the Earth's environment are brought up again, but instead painting a perspective from the future where the damage that could have been prevented in the past has been done and we're having to figure out how to deal with that. Number 11, Mood Ring. This was the perfect single to release with the rise of crystals, incense, and astrology enthusiasts, myself included. It describes trying to feel connected while learning to take control of your emotions, cleansing your inner being, finding spiritual faith and awareness, even in a world with so many flaws. It contains themes of mental health, the recent cultural impact of spirituality, and astrological significance are also referenced in this song. It indicates the first conscious interest in transcending towards enlightenment. So we We've reached the last song on the album, Oceanic Feeling, but before we really dive into it, we have to talk about what oceanic feeling means. So oceanic feeling is a term described as an expansion of consciousness beyond one's body and a sense of unlimited power associated with identification with the universe as a whole. This represents a sensation where you feel as one with the external world as it also becomes what you are. To me, this would mean setting your ego aside where you're able to find true peace and let go of truly irrelevant bullshit and feel infinite and euphoric. This term was coined by French writer Roman Rolland, who sent this letter to Sigmund Freud, which means he was probably problematic, but he wrote to Freud wishing that he would involve more spirituality in his psychological studies. And Rolland didn't come up with the shit on his own though, he felt inspired by Ramakrishna, um, who's said to have experienced spiritual ecstasies at a young age. So this made me think of ego deaths, and at first I wasn't sure if ego deaths and oceanic feeling were even related. I don't know much detailed info on ego deaths, but I do know that they can happen on heavy doses of psychedelics, where the lines of your sense of self and the world around you become blurred. This is likely to result in a fundamental transformation of the psyche in which your consciousness has transcended. So when I noticed this potential connection, I thought, Maybe ego death leads to oceanic feeling, and even though it can be a terrifying thing in the moment, I don't think it has to be in the long run if you're able to connect with your power and truly become reborn. While researching to help guide this thought, I found this article on the Psychedelic Spotlight written by Evan Lewis Healy. They described ego death as an overwhelming sense of interconnection that replaces the egocentric lens which most of us view the world. The writer also gives us an example of someone experiencing an ego death by including someone's description of what it was like when they were a subject in a death anxiety study. They explained, it was like being inside of nature and I could have just stayed there forever. It was wonderful. All kinds of other things were coming too, like feelings of being connected to everything. I mean, everything in nature, everything, even like pebbles, drops of water in the sea, it was like magic. It wasn't like talking about it, which makes it an idea. 
it was experiential. It was like being inside a drop of water, being inside of a butterfly's wing, and being inside of a cheetah's eye or eyes. This article also mentions the term oceanic boundlessness, which is when I was proven right, because oceanic boundlessness is just a different way to say oceanic feeling. In a separate study on psilocybin for treatment for depression, patients also described their experience as a sense of oneness, which, fun fact, correlated to their dis depression symptoms subsiding. So that's cool. The whole article is really interesting, so I recommend reading the whole thing. There is also a ton more information regarding ego death, spirituality, and the use of psychedelics, which is a big reason why I include shrooms in my work, because it just fits my style, and I think that shrooms are like the key to the universe, and I know that sounds crazy to a lot of people, but I just find myself pondering about the universe, and to me, that's just what makes the most sense. I, and I also just find discussing these topics extremely fascinating, regardless if I believe, if it's the key to whatever. It's just interesting information. So what does all of that have to do with the song? Now that we have all the background information set up, let's get into it. Let's get into oceanic feeling, what we've all been waiting for. So number 12, oceanic feeling. The next step in this whole album is about finding yourself from reminiscing of all aspects of time to fully emerge yourself in all of it, the past, the present, the future, and be comfortable with it and understanding that it's all going to be okay. It summarizes the album by putting each setting in one place. It describes feeling as one with the universe. This is where the path has led us to, from the confusion of the past taking over the moment to rather accepting the unknown, therefore being able to feel at peace. And this idea becomes a lot more obvious when you're aware of the technicalities that come with oceanic feeling and like what it all means psychologically and spiritually. The song explains what it means to feel at peace with the present moment, moments where you can easily analyze what was, what is, and what will be, and feel okay with it. It represents letting go of your past self, understanding there's always more to learn. Even when you have reached a certain goal, there's always more room to grow. Realizing that life is a never-ending evolution of consciousness. Feeling good regardless of all this shit. Finding your power, the use of psychedelic drugs, the sum of different parts, and what it all means to the whole. Tuning in and breathing, which is a mantra that everyone should follow. It's a very simple thing, but it works when you just need to ground yourself. The song gets slightly darker, and I think this provides a good contrast between the good that we felt for the rest of the song, because not everything in life is this perfect thing. There has to be a balance, there has to be a darker side, there has to be struggle, but through that there's still an abundance of confidence. Enlightenment is hard to find, but it isn't impossible, and I think it starts by taking the time to realize your inner power, which indicates that taking the time to process your emotions, communicating effectively, being productive when approached with conflict, and overall just taking care of yourself. Lord herself describes this song as a rumination of where she was at, where she was sort of in the middle of everything, completely submerged in the past, present, and future, and how that is affecting her mentality. And there's clearly, if you haven't figured it out by now, major heavy themes of past, present, and future, and sort of being outside of yourself to where you can see it clearly. Where, where you can see it clearly, acknowledge it, understand, and then embrace it. She's one with it all and isn't seeing things from an ego-based perspective. She separates from herself and extends into the universe. Now she can feel whole with the universe on her path towards transcendence. That's the oceanic feeling. You accept what's happened and let go of potential outcomes, and because of that, you're mentally available to focus on peace and your path towards enlightenment, which even Lord claims at the end of the song that it hasn't been found for her, but she's trying, implying that trying and taking your time is a crucial component to self-improvement. Her main goal of this album was to inspire the listener to obtain a deeper connection with themselves and in nature and in the world around them, and I think she definitely achieved that, especially with this song, by portraying her own insight and experiences quite beautifully. So with my drawing and hoping to do this song justice, I communicated these ideas into the cover art assignment. I chose to draw a skeleton because there's no specific material identity attached to a skeleton. It could be anyone, any race, any gender, sexuality. You can't tell those things by just looking at a skeleton. I also wanted to showcase a sense of vulnerability because you're kind of stripped from your skin, meaning you are like open and you're just free floating within in the universe. Surrounding the bottom half of the skeleton are a bunch of mushrooms, which is a little nod towards the psychedelic side of things. 
and there's also some fish to represent a ghostly presence. The left side is the past, the middle is the moment, which is where the skeleton is, and the right side is the future. The bottom half being the ocean then merges into the upper half, which is the universe. When you think about it, the ocean and space are actually quite similar. You'll see the skeleton reaching upwards towards the sun or towards enlightenment, and the skeleton realizes this sensation, which is why they're glowing. Overall, I just really love this song and I love illustrating detailed emotions so this was a perfect opportunity for me to do that. I struggle to live in the present moment a lot of the time because of my often anxious mindset so this song is just a big reminder to relax and that everything is going to work out in its own time. As long as I just trust myself and the universe and everything, I'm going to be fine. I just got to tune in and breathe out for the moment if I need a little extra uh, motivation or help. The song is written so well, and I think it's the perfect way, both lyrically and harmonically, to end the album. It emphasizes the value of being comfortable with who you are, because once you do that, you can get to know yourself a lot better and a lot more effectively. And once you are able to like hold on to that, projecting that becomes a very magical thing. The album isn't a story, there's no plot line. It's rather a stream of thoughts, song by song, taking place in different settings over the course of, of specific periods of her life, which they all seem to be closely related. It's very present, but it also ventures off into the past and future. It becomes a perfect balance of it all, and it's mostly a reminder that it's okay to look back at the past, and it's okay to look forward or be nervous about the future. Just don't look so far to where you can't see it all, because that's when things get tough. Just reel in on that moment, you got it, you can do this. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I appreciate you a lot. I hope you loved this drawing because I do and I'm pretty proud of it and I'm grateful to share it. I plan on making more content, so stick around, like and subscribe, comment, whatever you wanna do. I can't force you to do anything, but I do hope that you have a beautiful day.